Well, people ask, uh, what, do you, what do you feel like just before launch? And there's sort of a serious answer and then a not so serious answer. And the not so serious is that, how do you think you'd feel if you knew you were on top of two million parts built by the lowest bidder on a government contract? Well, 50 years ago on February 20th of 1962, John Glenn became the first American to fly into orbit. It was a big deal. After the Soviet Union had already flown their cosmonauts into space, the Americans were able to come back with a stunning three-orbit mission by John Glenn. Looking towards the unknown. It's a very serious time. You've trained very hard for this. You think uh, back in those days we hadn't done an orbital flight yet. We were very competitive in that first group of seven astronauts, but when it came time for a flight, you never found a, a tighter group of seven all backing what was going on on that flight. How did Friendship 7 get its name? NASA had said it was okay to name the different flights, as had been done in airplanes, and fighter airplanes in particular, where uh, almost everyone that flew fighters had a particular name for their airplane. Welcome back to this planet. I thought when I had been assigned to the orbital flight that there was going to be a lot of worldwide attention on this. So I turned that job of naming over to my, my two kids who were in their very early teen years at that time. And they took it very seriously. They made a, a, a big long list of potential names. And I told my, my children I thought it should represent something of our view toward other nations around the world. But they had suggested one in particular. And they thought that friendship. Now the seven part, uh, we had all, all seven of us had agreed that we were a team on this and that every flight would have the seven on it as part of the title. You spoke during your uh, orbital mission about what you saw, but could you tell us a little bit about what you saw on the view? When you launch and you're up there and first into orbit, then you first are detached from the booster. Uh, the first thing it has done is to, uh, the, the spacecraft turns around so that the ablation shield, the heat shield, is facing in the direction of flight. So if you have to make an immediate emergency re-entry, you could. And that re-entry attitude was a little bit nose down so that I could look out through the window and look back uh, clear across the state of Florida and around the Gulf of Mexico. And as I, I think my words at that time were beautiful view, which it certainly was. Oh, that view is tremendous. Uh, to see things from that altitude. And that was the way it was on around the world. You could see whole nations beyond human sight. Friendship 7 makes a slow boat out of the it's sun. Okay. Does the capsule look like it's okay, over? The capsule looks good from here, over. John Glenn became, as a result of this flight, a household name, uh, a person who was revered universally, literally around the world. The of Manhattan, to the ticker tape parade of... Now, you came back as an American hero. Did the flight change you in some way, or was it how you were perceived, or what? Well, I'm sure it, you couldn't go through something like that without being changed a bit by it, just by the experience itself, whether anybody else knew about it or not. But uh, I think it occurred at sort of a low point when Americans were sort of down. Our, our psyche was a bit down as a nation as a whole at that time, I think. We were being challenged by the Soviets, and everybody was aware of that and very keenly aware of it. You're 90 years old? Yeah, 90. And uh, so how do you feel? I think exercise and attitude, I've told people. I think if you have something you're looking forward to doing every day, so you're not just getting up and sitting in a chair and watching TV all day, I think if you have something that you're, you're looking forward to, whatever it is, whatever kind of work or writing or church work or scout, just what you name it. Godspeed, John Glenn. Godspeed into the future.